Don't worry, I'm not gonna make champagne here. One question that we received from you guys is, how would we go about setting up a Rayleigh-Taylor instability? So what is Rayleigh-Taylor instability? Well, to demonstrate in a real world example, I have two glasses here. This one contains chilled water out of the fridge. So it should be a temperature between six and 10 degrees Celsius. This here is water that I just colored with some dye here. And by introducing those dye particles into the water, it should get a bit more dense than normal water. I'm gonna put this into the microwave. As you can see now, this is steaming. So it should be in the range of between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius. And what I'm gonna try and do now is put a layer of this dyed hot liquid on top of this cold water here. And as this liquid is still hot, it should remain as a layer on top of this water because it's lighter currently. However, as soon as it cools down, it gets more dense and it will sag into the water. And then I hope we can see what a Rayleigh-Taylor instability is and what it looks like. Here I'm trying only somewhat successfully to layer the hot dyed liquid on top of the chilled water. You can see it somewhat tries to mix, but as the blue liquid is still a good bit warmer than the normal water, it remains mostly separated. However, over time, and this took around 20 minutes, so I sped this up, the blue liquid cools down and thus gets more dense and wants to sink into the water. And that's when you see these streaks, these mushroom-like streaks appearing. This phenomenon is called Rayleigh-Taylor instability. And I was really surprised how well this actually worked out and how clearly you can see those streaks forming in the two liquids. What I'd like to do in Houdini is build a 2D version of that same behavior that we've just seen. And the easiest, most straightforward way to do so is using Houdini's built-in flip solver, which is a go-to method for simulating fluids. However, I will create a two-dimensional version of this because on the one hand, I really like the abstract shapes that it forms. On the other hand, of course, it is way quicker to simulate than a full 3D version. So let's get started by dropping down a geo node, diving in there, deleting the file node, and creating a box. And we will use that box to create particles, but we just want a thin slice of particles. So let's scale down the box's size to something really small, say 0.002 in our case. Next, attach a points from volume sop. And thanks to your brilliant comments, I learned that I can use this without actually piping in a volume. So just wiring in a geo works fine. And in here, I wanna dial back the point separation to correspond to the same value as our minimum box thickness, that is 0.002 in our case. So we now have a really dense point grid here. And in order to simulate those two differently dense liquids, I would like to split these points into two groups and assign different values on them. I'm gonna use two point triangles to do so. Let's drop down the first point triangle. And in here, I only want to influence points that are above the ground plane. So points that have a Y value that's bigger or equal to zero. Let's select them by typing in an expression in the group slot here. So I can use the group field not only to type in names of any groups, but also type in expressions. I'm gonna select my Y position, that's a capital P, and check if it's bigger or equal to zero like this. So now this VEX code here should only be executed for points with a Y value that's bigger or equal to zero. So points above the ground plane. Let's first set their color value to white like so. And this might look a bit irritating because we just said we only want to influence points above the ground plane, which we are doing in essence. However, we are newly creating an attribute here, CD. So even for the points that we are not setting the attribute value here specifically, so the points below ground plane, even for those points, Houdini needs to initialize the color attribute. And in our case, Houdini just takes the standard value that we input here, so white, as the default value for all of the points, even those with a non-initialized color value. In our case, the points below the ground plane. We'll take care of that in a second. The other two parameters I'd like to set are density and mass. So let's start with the density, which should be a float value which will tell our flip solver how dense the liquid is. In our case, let's use a float slider, call it density to set this value click here to create the user interface here. And now I have my density slider here. Set this value to 1600, that worked well for me. Next, I'd like to set the individual points mass and I'm gonna set it to 1.0 so they are active. Let's copy this node here and wire it below the other point wrangle here. And in our case, let's just invert the selection here. So we're now gonna influence points below the ground plane. Let's set their color to black. And we can see now we have those two different point groups. Let's set their density to a thousand here. And we are set to actually create our simulation. Before that, I just wanna append a null here, call it out underscore PTS for out points, and then just create a dotnet dynamics network here. Where are the points in here? 
although we could do without that for now, but just for visual clarity, I'd like to wire this in here. Highlight it, dive in the dot .NET. The first thing we need to create is a flip object, which will hold all the data that's necessary for a simulation. And in here, I'd like to use the points coming in through my null, and I'd like to use them as a particle field. So the particles have already been created. Each point is a particle. Let's point the path to our null here. And the first thing I want to dial in here is the particle separation. You might remember that parameter from when we created the points in the points from volume sub. So let's set that to the exact same value. And this will dictate basically the particle scale, the particle size. Next, we need a flip solver. We're going to wire our flip object in here. And finally, some sort of gravity. Wire this down here. If we go up one level and hit play, we see this is not the result we've been looking for. So to actually prevent all those points from sliding downwards, let's head back into the dotnet and do two things in here. First on the flip solver in the volume motion tab, let's adjust the box size here, which dictates the size of my simulation container. And let's set it to exactly the same measurements as our box that we use to create those particles. So one by one by 0 0.002. Next, in the flip object here, check closed boundaries, which will make the particles behave as if they were trapped inside a glass container, whose size is driven by the parameters that we just set up here in the flip solver's box size here. And finally, in the flip solver, in the density tab, I like to check density by attribute. So the solver actually uses the points density attribute that we set previously with the help of the point wrangles. So I think we're good to go. Let's head one level up, maybe save this, keep our fingers crossed and hit play. And we can immediately see we get the same effect as in our liquid, those mushroomy fingers moving through each other, creating those really intricate structures. Let's stop that for now. And one thing that I'd like to fix just for artistic sake, my simulation pushed those particles apart also in their z-depth a bit. I know this is not physically accurate, but I'll take the artistic freedom here and attach another point wrangle. And I'm going to reset the particles z position to zero. I'm going to do that by just multiplying the position vector, that is at p. I will multiply this vector with a constant, which should be one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis, and zero along the z-axis, which takes care of scaling back my particles into the same plane, so I can see now way more detail in here. Let's zoom in a bit, like so, and let this run a bit further. That's starting to look really nice. All I have to do now is just write a p-scale and use either mantra or redshift and render them as particles. There are several parameters which you can tweak in order to change the look of a simulation. Of course, you could change your liquid's density here, upper and lower density. On the other hand, what you could do in the dotnet in the flip solver, you could head to the viscosity tab, enable viscosity, and then again, enable viscosity by attribute. And in the same manner that we just created a density attribute with different values for our two liquids, you could create a viscosity attribute for two liquids, which dictates how sticky a given liquid is. So how slow or quickly it flows actually. But for now, let's uncheck this, head up again, and let the simulation run a bit. So that was how to quickly create a Rayleigh Taylor instability using Houdini's built-in flip solver. I hope you're having fun with this. And let me just say that I really enjoy being back for season three. We have quite a few neat setups planned for this season. So if you like what we're doing, maybe consider supporting us on Patreon. If you create any artwork that you'd like to share, please do so. And finally, a huge thank you to all of our patrons, especially to Mohammed al -Abri, Joseph Howerton, David Aiden, Bahman Johan Bakshi, and John Koontz. And see you in the next tutorial. Cheers!